Hey, well, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining the podcast today. I'm talking about a really great topic that I'm passionate about, and I'm really excited to share the topic of EOS with you. EOS stands for Entrepreneurial Operating System, and it's a it's a management model that can really help you improve your department or especially your company. So I'm going to talk all about it. I'm going to talk about my experiences with it as I've used it for over three years now. And if you're listening to me now, if you've listened to me in the past, you know I'm not in my 20s anymore, right? And I, I, I actually first owned my uh, business when I was 20, and I've been part of partnerships. I've owned businesses on my own. I owned a franchise uh, for 15 years. I've seen lots of different business models, management models. I actually have a couple of degrees in management and I'm really sold on EOS. I think it has so many tools and systems that can really help people manage their business. So boy, it's a, it's a fairly big topic. Uh, I'm almost like, where do I start? Right. I'm going to, I'm just going to talk about as kind of an overview and kind of some of the, some of the systems, some of the the weekly systems, and I'm even going to get specific to talk about a really important weekly meeting that happens inside EOS. That anyone using EOS, you know, they know it's the most important meeting of the week for the leadership team. It's called the Level Ten uh, meeting. It's a ninety minute long meeting, and it's it just has so many great great. Um, just tools inside of it to get a, a really, uh, you know, picture vision of the company. I, I won't go into details of that uh, level 10 meeting just now. I want to start kind of at the bigger picture. What I like about EOS, when we went through it over three years ago, one of the things it really does is it helps it helps the owner and the leadership team to clarify the vision. Like, what what is the vision of the company? What is the mission? Like, what are you about? Where are you trying to go? And can you can you put that in words? Can you articulate it in such a way that people can understand and, and so that everyone is moving in the right direction and you know big picture, this is where we're going. Um, it it does that. It uh EOS will help create traction. And what I mean by that is through these weekly meetings, you can literally see progress happening amongst each department with specific employees, as you map that out, you could have real accountability where there's a specific task for people to do, maybe a multiple task, and they know what it looks like and they know when it's done. So traction is something really, really powerful uh, that you could see inside EOS. And, you know, a third term that comes to mind is it can help you create a healthy company a functional company, a, a, a team that can work together, a team that can support support each other. And it could be a, a, a great uh, team effort when everyone's working together and helping one another and meeting on a regular basis. So those are kind of some, some big picture items that come to mind when I think about EOS. There is a book written by the creator of this model. His name is Gino Wickman. And he did write a book called Traction, Get a Grip on Your Business. And Gino has written several books, but this book really summarizes the whole EOS model. So I, I would recommend it if, if you're not in the EOS world, so to speak. Um, you, you know, it's an easy place to start, to start with traction. Um, when when we went through this, I wanted to talk about some of the some of the big picture items that you're kind of um in a way forced to to wrestle with and to be able to articulate. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, what is your mission? What are you after? Why do you exist? What's your purpose? Uh, what are your core values? Like, do you have actually words written down to say like, this is who we are? Uh, some of our core values that we landed on are we're proactive, we're optimistic, um, we do what is right, and by the way, these core values, they we agreed upon them on our leadership team. So we have a, a handful of people on our leadership team. And so 
we had to meet and we had to come up with a lot of these core values and we had to agree upon, uh, I think we decided on about seven of them. And we had to say no to some and, you know, this is more important and this is what this core value would look like. Uh, we, pract we practice open and honest communication. We improve our company and ourselves. Uh, we do what we say we'll do. And the last one is we serve and support our, our clients. And I'm really, you know, I'm a, I'm a cynical as the next guy, right? So, and I've worked in corporate America and, and even in small companies. And I always say, ah, oh, you know, there's two core values sets, right? There's the one that's on the wall and the, this is what companies say. And then, then there's the real one. And when you work in a big company, you kind of really need to, you have to learn what their real core values are. And those are not on the walls. I say that because there's usually a gap between the two. And when there's a gap between the real core, you know, the core values that the company says are their core values versus the real ones that get lived out, it, that creates um, unengaged, unmotivated employees. And then that leads to, um, you know, everything but productivity. So I do like to make sure that that gap is as small as possible. And I like to ask that open and honest question to say like, hey, you know, what core values are we not living out? Or in the last month, what core values, what, you know, where do we fall short? But I don't just like to focus on the negative, of course. And I do like to ask the question, in what ways did we live out of core values? Uh, so doing that, just checking in on, are we really living our core values? I think is really helpful. It creates that open and honest communication. And then it allows us to improve. So more more things that we have to figure out is you know what's our what's our passion or cause, um, what's our ten year goal specifically? Can we put numbers down to say revenue wise or number of employees or you know is everyone going to be um, working in an office or is it okay to be working remotely? All those kind of things are, are really helpful to write down. How are you unique? You know, we work with a lot of different kind of companies. Some are big, some are small, some are medium. And quite honestly, a lot of companies don't have these things down. Like, can you articulate three to five ways that you're unique, different than any other company? It's really helpful to know who you are and to be able to articulate that so that others can articulate that to your to your target audience, to your prospects. Here's a couple more. What what are your proven processes? Do you have any proven processes that you're really, really good at that you that that help you deliver results consistently? And then do you have a guarantee? Like no matter what, you can you can stand behind this and you guarantee that this is going to happen. Those are great things to figure out. And so we have to figure those things out as well as something like an accountability chart. Um, when, when I say the word accountability chart, it's kind of like who does what around here? And you've all seen the little pyramids with people's name and their job responsibilities. It, it does remind me of a book called The E-Myth. And so some of you have read the book, The E-Myth for Contractors by Michael Gerber. And that's a, to me, it's a great place to start if you don't have any kind of management structure and you're real small. And what's great about the E-Myth is he, he interviews an owner and it's a female who basically says like, look, it's a small business. I got to do everything. And they try to map out an accountability chart and, when you're small, you are kind of, you're wearing lots of different hats, but as you grow, and as you identify roles that you could hire, you take one of those hats off and you hand it to somebody else and your accountability chart grows. And it's really good to identify who does what and to have clarity on that. So that's, that's another thing that we had to work through. All right, so now let me transition to what I think is the most genius part about EOS, and that is the level 10 meeting. So level 10 meetings are about 90 minutes long. They're with the leadership team, and there is a lot of information to cover, and there's a lot of topics to talk through. So I'm just going to go uh, step by step. Now, I, I mentioned a 90-minute meeting. Um, 
that the heart and soul of a of a level ten meeting is uh, sixty minutes goes to um, an area that's called IDS, and I'll, I'll get into that. But the first thirty minutes of the meeting, first you check in, you say, you know, what's a win? And typically, is there a personal win and a in a work win? And that's really important if you if you look at all the studies about productive meetings when you start out with something positive time after time all the stats say all the studies say that you're going to have a more productive meeting that people are more engaged and it just in our brains it creates kind of a uh, some positive momentum to have a better meeting so um on all of our eos meetings that's just how they're started you know what's a win personal win and business win and I personally like to write them down. I, I write stuff down when I'm listening just to kind of be more of an active listener. But what I love about that is a lot of times we're working so hard, we really don't know what's going on in, in people's and our employees' um, personal lives. And it's just a very brief time just kind of check in and, and hear about some of the things that uh, that's happening, that's something that they're excited about. And it's a great way to learn about somebody else that you're working with. That it's a very safe space, you know, if someone doesn't feel comfortable sharing um, something going on, it's fine, you know, maybe they're happy that they have a uh, good warm cup of coffee today or that they're healthy, it doesn't matter. And then other people uh, will share different things that they're excited about. So really cool. Just just that question, uh, I think is a great way to start the meetings. And that's just built into the system. Now, the next section is really, really powerful. It's called the scorecard section. And it takes a little bit of time to set up scorecards. So every employee that you have, especially in the leadership team, there's certain responsibilities that they have. And the scorecard is a time to report on those key specific metrics, those KPIs from each department. And even if you're a smaller company, it's really good to just keep track of this kind of stuff. This is really good, solid reporting. Um, so in a basement waterproofing company, the, for the scheduler, lead generation person on their scorecard, we, on a weekly basis in the level 10 meeting, they might want to report on how many, how many leads were generated in the last week, how many leads were assigned to sales reps. How many presentations were given? Um, how many how many leads did they personally book? You know, those that gives you kind of an idea. Those are really important numbers for the the scheduling person. For the for someone in sales or keeping track of sales or a sales manager, and that's going to be your your sales volume or what the closing percentage is those you know those are two really big ones for the installation department that's going to be you know number of jobs completed maybe for the week and the month um revenue collected or how many customer reviews were collected in the last week What we do and what I've seen other companies do is they they use some kind of a spreadsheet and there's a there's a new spreadsheet for each quarter and the employee's name is there and their their key uh, points that they're going to report on is there. And then for scorecard, it's largely, did you hit your goal? You know, yes or no. And it's not a discussion thing. This is the kind of thing you just have to keep moving and you go through them one by one. Did you hit your goal? Yes or no. You go through them like that. All right, so the third section of EOS, now we're moving along kind of fast here, is the rocks. Everyone has a rock. What is a rock? It's a 90-day goal. And each person usually comes up with a rock on their own and it's approved by the owner. And sometimes it's two or three rocks, but you don't want too much. So a rock is a, it's not something that you could do in a couple of weeks. It's something that you can chip away at throughout the quarter. And the idea is you want that rock to help support where you're going as a company for the year-end goal and the bigger picture goal. 
and everyone has something that they can improve upon within their department. So that's what a rock is. It's like at the end of three months, if we have this one thing done, it's going to improve our department. It's going to improve our company. For production, it might be we need a more systematic way to train new crew members. And it's important that there's clarity when you create a rock. So you have to be able to say at the end of the three months, at the end of the quarter, yes, it's done or no, it's not done. And there's 100% clarity as far as what that looks like. So if a rock is we want to be able to train employees more effectively, it's going to look like we have a standard operating procedure and a checklist, and there's going to be a list of 30 different things that a new employee is going to get trained on. And there's going to be a system on how to get them through all 30 different items of, of working on a crew and installing basement waterproofing, working on crawl spaces, foundation repair. And there's a system. And if that system is in place and everything is done, then at the end of the quarter, that rock is going to be completed. So again, it starts, it starts with the department head saying, like, hey, here's here's you know, a couple ideas that I think would be great rocks to the owner or the general manager. The general manager talks about them and says, Yes, this is great, or hey, can we tweak this? Or or I was thinking of this more based on what's going on and where we're headed. Um, so that happens initially, you get clarity, and then you make that um, an official rock for the quarter. For sales. It may be at the end of the quarter, you want to be able to do a great inspection. And you need to map out exactly what that uh, what a great inspection looks like and what a person would do if they were in a basement or foundation with the homeowner, things they would look at, questions they would ask, maybe pictures they would take, tools they would use, maybe roughly how long it would take, what they would do on the outside, everything involved with a great inspection. So that would need to be mapped out. And then you would need to figure out a way to actually uh, train people so that they have a more effective inspection and then hold people accountable. So that could be a rock in and of itself. How do we end up doing great inspections? Another rock for sales is we want to have a more effective close. We don't just want to, you know, give a price and say, okay, I'll, I'll mail you the proposal. How can you walk through the, the closing procedure Try to draw the customer out as long as you can. You know, every every company here has kind of some different closing procedures, but I really think it, it's helpful to try to answer all their questions there, tactfully remove objections, make it easy for them to buy. Really try to take that as far as you can. Otherwise, you're just hitting inspections, emailing. I don't want to get into, um, you know, how you should be closing, but you should have a, a system on how to close. And then you also want everyone that's doing sales to kind of follow that, in, including yourself. You know, sometimes owners, because of the lack of accountability, we kind of do whatever we want to do because no one's going to, no one's your boss, right? That's why you're the boss. But at the same time, you know, I mean, you know, if I were to do this, I, I know I would be selling more. And so you can make yourself accountable to someone else or your leadership team um, to make sure that happens. So that's what a rock looks like. And in the level 10 meeting, someone's leading the meeting and it's you going right down the track of the list. And it says, all right, here's this rock. Are we on track or off track? And on track typically means you've made some progress this week. And by the end of the quarter, this will be done. There's clarity as far as what needs to be done and it will be done. And if it's off track, that question then is, would you like to move this down to this section? I'm going to talk about in a bit, IDS. You know, basically, do you, would you like the team's help to try to get you unstuck to make progress on your rock? So you're going through each one on track, off track. It's not a discussion thing. 
It's not like a cool, let's talk about this now. It's basically saying on track or off track. If it's off track, would you like to move it to IDS? That's all it is, that, that section there. Now, again, it does take a little bit of work to figure out what the rocks are, what they should be. We at our company, there is a decent amount of time um, towards the end of each quarter to try to identify what the next rock should be. Um, is something going to carry over? Does it need a week or two? Did it get redefined and so on? I think we put a, a decent amount of time into um, these rocks so that we have pretty smooth level 10 meetings. Okay, so each section that I've read off, just kind of, you know, personal wins, scorecard, rocks, and then this next section, uh, to-dos. These are like five minutes or less, like you're moving. And especially that first one, if I could jump up towards the top, you know, personal wins, sometimes you're going to take a, a couple minutes more there. But this isn't like, hey, let me tell you all about my weekend. Like you're moving along. And there's a tendency for people to kind of, they want to they want to unpack it. They want to talk about it. They're not always comfortable saying like, I didn't hit my goal. They like to say, yeah, but yeah, but in this, no, it's just on track, off track, moving on. That's it. Well, we could talk about these items later on if need to. So it does create some discipline. And as you could see, uh, it's got the A word in there, right? It's got accountability. So each person is accountable to, to get stuff done. And it's very specific as far as what, people need to do. And that's that's why I'm such a believer in the system. It, it really creates a great company culture. So the next item in the level 10 meeting is to-dos. So typically in a level 10 meeting, there are specific tasks that need to be done. Each bit individual would have a task. And the question is, hey, I have it here that you were supposed to do. And you just read the to-do. And you typed it in last week. And it's not something you have to remember. It's documented. The question is, did you get it done? Yes or no? And you go through your to-do list and it's really good accountability. Um, there's tons of EOS tools that emails can go out for reminders. So that's your to-do list. It's just make sure that nothing gets, uh, nothing falls through the cracks. And then the fun begins. This is where um, the IDS starts. I, I mentioned earlier, in this podcast that the this section is about 60 minutes. You don't always use the whole time, but it's built into the meeting. We EOSers call this the IDS section of the meeting, but uh, IDS stands for identify, discuss, and solve. So if you could picture the leadership team, uh, and that's and there's a there's a list of stuff that has to get IDS, and we have it on our spreadsheet all the time. And we have a priority list. Everything either has a one or a two or a three, and you discuss. You know, hey, is this what do you think? Is this a one or a two? Ah, oh, it's a one. We got to deal with this. Okay, we're putting it at the top of the list. How about this one? No, I, you know, it'd be good to do it, but it's not right now. We don't have to do it now. So give that a three. So. I, on the IDS list, you have all the important issues, priority one issues on the top, and then you have priority two issues and priority three issues. And typically, is is there anything, you know, you're asking, is there anything else that should be added or that anything we need to deal with right now? And that's so you, you need to reprioritize each week. And then something from the rocks, like maybe someone said, like, I'm off track. It's the second week I'm off track. I did, I feel super stuck. I could use some help. So that would be on the list. And that's something that you could deal with right away. So what happens during IDS is you you bring up an issue. You, you try to get clarity on the topic. Of course, getting clarity really, really helps solve things. So you discuss it and you try to solve it. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, at the end of these EOS meetings, each person that participated is asked to give a score one to 10, 10 being, you know, outstanding, uh, one being horrible. I've never seen less than a six, but part of what makes a good meeting is people in that leadership team participates and they're able to give feedback and they're able to discuss it. Uh, so that's really important. So we're in the identify, discuss, and solve 
issue. So imagine each week your leadership team identifying, discussing, and solving the most important issues in your company. What that does is it really creates a, a, a team spirit and they feel really empowered because they're playing a really important role in the direction of the company. They're solving problems for the company so that they can uh, help move the company forward. This is really, really empowering. People feel like, hey, I'm playing a really important role here week after week and actually day after day. So um, I, I'm a, a big believer in this identify, discuss, solve issue. It is a big part of the, the level 10 meeting. Since the IDS section is such a, a lengthy part of the level 10 meeting, I want to highlight some of the features um, about IDS. So what I like about it is it's a very, very focused um, discussion. There, you, you have the leadership team with you. They're not sitting on their phones. They're all present. And the most important issue in the company gets put on the table and everyone is there to focus on, you know, how do we improve this situation? So I love that it's focused discussion. Um, I love that it is um, action oriented. So the end game is there's a solution to it and there's a plan of action and there's going to be accountability. Like at, at the end of that topic that gets discussed, there's somebody that's going to end up carrying out that task and they will be accountable to make sure that happens. Uh, another aspect that I like about the IDS is it, it encourages open communication. It encourages honesty amongst team members and their voice gets heard. And I can't tell you how many times just hearing from some other department that it's not primarily their issue, but it affects that department. And hearing from them helps give us clarity as far as what the real issue is. And it also helps gives us clarity as far as what the solution needs to be. So open communication is huge. A couple more highlights about IDS are, which I love this one, is it prevents recurring issues because gosh, how many times do we like keep re reliving the same issue over and over again? But again, when we have that, that focused attention, when we have the leadership team together and you're solving problems and you document the solution and someone's responsible for it and everyone understands what the new system is, that really uh, helps prevent recurring issues. Um, the last one I'll mention is it's a system that is really adaptable to a wide variety of issues and problems. Um, you can pretty much throw just about any topic in there. You, you, you know, you don't always solve them, right? Uh, sometimes issues require expertise that's kind of not at that table, but you can throw a variety, almost any issue in there and each department will give some feedback on it because typically these issues affect the department. So it's extremely adaptable um, problem solving technique. So that's what IDS is. And again, that, that's about you know 60 out of the 90 minutes. Um, and I'm afraid that some owners might be thinking, oh my gosh, like we don't have 90 minutes in the middle of a week. Like we're running around putting fires out. It's craziness. Um, boy, you know, can you afford to, to not have this kind of a meeting? Like there's just so much valuable, good information that comes out of this meeting. And it's the one time that everyone's together and you're just making sure that all the, all the oars are rowing in the, in the right direction to get the boat to kind of to go where you're trying to get it to go. So, uh, to, you know, towards the end of a level 10 meeting is you know, you, the leader goes around and says, hey, calls the person's name, scale of one to 10, what would you give this meeting? Um, and they're rating it and you're writing it down. And again, you know, a good meeting is you had good discussion and you solve things. 
and you were able to cross things off the list and you were able to, to make progress and people participated. That typically makes a really good meeting. If someone uh, scores higher or lower than kind of the norm, it's really helpful to ask, hey, whoever, you know, Matt, you, you gave it a six. Like, wh what could we do differently next time? And it's not an evaluation of the leader. It's really an evaluation of the meeting and the participants that made that meeting. So whatever, Matt might say something like, you know, people didn't participate much or we, I kind of felt like, we didn't get much done and we, we could have been more productive. Um, someone, you know, let's say only one person says a 10 and most everyone else said eight or nine. It's like, hey, Sue, you gave this a 10. Uh, what'd you like about it so much? What do we do well? It's like, oh, I feel like there was good energy. I feel like we got all focused. We're now working on the, uh, we're all on the same team. We're headed in the right direction. You know, getting that feedback is helpful because, the next time you have a meeting, which is going to be the following week at the same time, uh, you're able to improve. And it's important to get that feedback. And again, you notice the theme. People's voices are being heard. They're active participants. They're part of the solution. So I saved the best for last. And here's why I love EOS. So I used to think that if I just help Basement Waterproofing and Foundation Repair contractors just generate a lot of leads. They'd be able to figure out how to add a crew and, and become more profitable and make a lot of money. And I've told several people, you know, I'm passionate about helping others create generational wealth because we've seen quite a few owners become very wealthy as they grow their business. It could be very profitable. What is... Um, what the twist is for that is this. Some owners just end up working a lot of hours and they don't have the structure inside of a company to manage that effect effectively and to be able to, you know, as an effective leader, cast a vision and get people to follow it and get people all moving in the right direction. And, and that's, that's what an effective company is doing. It, you just can't get leads and just sell more stuff. I mean, quite honestly, if you don't have the structure, that's just chaos. That's just more problems. And you can't just assume that people know how to do that. And that's where I feel like EOS uh, comes in. And it's a super handy, um, efficient, very, very well thought out, uh, very well supported with lots of different tools, uh, management system to manage your company and to become more effective. And what I love about it, it empowers people. I've, I've worked with way too many owners over the years that kind of feel like they do everything. Um, yeah, they have a lot of employees and a lot of employees do really significant things, but it's that owner that is always overseeing all these little details of like, hey, did you think about that? Did you do this? Did you do this? It's like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, good. Thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling me. With EOS, there's more accountability. There's more discipline involved. It's an entire culture that you're changing. And it gets the weight off of the owner's shoulder and it gets shared amongst a team and it creates synergy. And it's it's a positive, um, great like company culture that comes out of this. So obviously I'm a huge fan of EOS. Uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to, to hit me up. Happy to talk about it with you. If you're looking for a book, Traction is the book, Gino Wickman, and there's several books, but I would start with Traction. And it, it takes, you know, you don't just read a book and like suddenly you've adapted Traction, right? It could take a, a while. It could take several months. It could actually take a few years to kind of really get it down. Um, but boy, there's so many good tools and resources with this kind of a management system that I would encourage you, if, if you've never heard of EOS, I would encourage you to jump in and just begin to start adapting some of these tools. You know, and it, the, the black and white, the perfect rule of it, EOS is designed for companies between 10 and 100 employees. Um, but I've seen smaller companies adapt EOS. I've seen lots of people adapt some of the principles and some of the disciplines and tools of EOS and really have gotten a lot of mileage out of it. So... There it is. I hope that's helpful. I hope that you at least look at EOS if you're not already using it. And if you're using it, 
I'm very confident that you're enjoying it and it, it's worked very well for your company.